Calibration no longer required, and welcome to another episode of Watch Along. I'm Char Fox, and today's Char Fox Facts it has to be a good one. Hold on a second, let me think about this. Um, I'm currently leaving my hair to grow out as much as I can. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's something that's happening right now. Um, but I'm, I'm curious to see how my hair would look if I have it really long. I did it long once, but it wasn't, you know, that much, you know. <laughs> Um, so I'm probably going to leave it grow out a lot more than what I did a long time ago. So when I get to the point where I used to be, I'll go ahead and say like, Hey, this is, this is where I'm at. So, or this is where I used to be. <laughs> so then from that point forward, I'll reach a new record. So I don't know. Is that, does that count of it as a fact? I don't know. I think it's more like something that's, that's happening with me right now and not a fact. So... So I'll throw in another one, just in case. Um, I am very accident prone. I. It's not that I'm clumsy, and it's not that 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 I'm careless. But things just happen, you know. It's 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 really weird, but accidents just just come to me and. And I get injured or something happens and and so that's 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 an actual fact, yeah. I'll go with that one instead of the hair. The hair is happening, but you know <laughs> for facts of Char Fox, I'm accident prone. I'm very very easily able to become involved in an accident. Now surprisingly, when it comes to operating vehicles and stuff my accident history is pretty good. I think I may have had uh, just at one time, two times. Yeah, I think three times. Yeah, all in all, three times. I've had I've had three accidents in my lifespan. <laughs> so. There was something about my birthday I wanted to mention, but... Eh. Oh, well. So, yeah. So, when it comes to operating vehicles, I'm okay. That's why I'm totally fine riding my motorcycle or riding, driving a car. Um, but when it comes to, like, daily tasks, you know, <laughs> things happen. <laughs> Things happen that I just don't understand how they happen. And the random things too. Let me let me tell you this little story. I think I may have shared this one or not. I don't think I have. I know I mentioned it in other places, but I don't think with you guys. So I'm gonna share with you guys. A long time ago, when Char Fox was still a cub in fourth grade, um during that time I used to live in the Dominican Republic, right? Um my dad retired, and, and, and we decided to move to the uh, Dominican Republic, all right? So I was going to school, and the school had a huge, a huge, but I'm talking about humongous backyard. No, I don't want to call it a backyard. It's more like the recess area where kids can go out and, and, and play and have fun or whatever, but it was it's huge. I'm talking about, like... Probably, maybe, if you were to grab a soccer field and put it on the ground horizontally like this, yeah, but I'm talking about like FIFA soccer ship, you know, like, 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 World Cup size, you know, not like, not like, you know, 
regional local chapter size. I'm talking about like, you know, World Cup size. At least it felt that way for me as a kid. Because that thing was huge. It it sucked walking from one end all the way to the other end to buy your snack or whatever. And then the school building was over here. Right? But anyway, I'm getting distracted. That's not the point. So one day, one 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 random day, we were playing this game. Um in Spanish it's called Death. <laughs> now it sounds more morbid than what it really is, but it's a it's a game where you have an object, usually a valuable object, and and people they throw it on the ground, right? And what you need to do, your task, everybody's task, is to secure the object and run to the safety zone. If you make it to the safety zone, then you're safe. Hence the name, safety zone. <laughs> But the thing was that as soon as you touch the object or you pick it up, you are, you become vulnerable, right? And people can hit you. Like people can punch you, kick you, push you. It's, it's pretty nuts. <laughs> as kids, we played nutty games, but it, it, it was, it was, everybody loved it because the, the, the reward mingled in with the risk of bodily harm <laughs> it was so exciting you know as kids we were gambling we were we wouldn't even know it we had like this addiction to to thrilling and exciting and danger things you know but anyway so the game was called death or or la muerte <laughs> and and then this one particular day the prize was 10 Dominican pesos. Now, 10 Dominican pesos is a lot. That thing can buy you an icy with a pizza fritter and a bag of chips and a slice of pizza itself and a hot dog. You get that full combo for 10 Dominican pesos. Yeah, boy. <laughs> yeah, boy. But, um... <laughs> So that was the prize. Somebody deposited 10 pesos. Everybody gathered around the 10 pesos. And it's on, you know. And we would put the prize as far away to the safety zone as possible. Now, everybody was in on this. And I'm talking about, there was like, um, there were, we had four fourth grades. So fourth grade A, B, C, and D. Right, I was in B. I wanted to be in Charlie, but hey, <laughs> I was in Bravo, fourth Bravo. Anyway, um, switch it around, and I had this joke where it was before I came before you, <laughs> or I was there before you, or we were on the other side before you. You know, I had this joke as a kid. Oh God, <laughs> thoughts are crossing my mind right now that I don't want to discuss. But anyway, um. <laughs> I might edit that out. <laughs> but any case, back to the point. Um, where was I? Yeah, so the the entire fourth grades were in it. And every fourth grade had approximately, believe it or not, at that time, we had around 41 to 42 students. So that's like, we're talking about 120, 160 students, 80, 80, yeah. We're talking about like 160 kids, all thirsty for blood, you know? <laughs> and who's going to be the, 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 the courageous one to sacrifice himself for 10 pesos, you know? Um, so, <laughs> so that's the layout. The stage is set. So let's go to the story now. So everybody huddled up, or at least everybody that could fit huddled up, right? Oh, wait, really quick. One small backstory detail. I had a best friend. His name was Luis. I don't remember his last name. But hey, at the time, his name is Luis. And Luis was a very skinny, bony kid. And not because of malnourishment, but his body physique was just very skinny. 
And for backstory, um, he once hit me with his elbow. And it was extremely painful because his bone is just, just popping out. It's so sharp, you know, or, or the, the, the base of his wrist his bone pops out a little bit on the base of the wrist and his knuckles don't talk about his knuckles because that's even worse you know so if he were to like hit you or punch you or whatever he's very ouchy because he's so bony right okay so we're all gathered back to the story we're all gathered we're all set and and I'm they put the 10 pesos on the floor by the way at the time 10 pesos, the equivalent of one American dollar. So <laughs> to put it in perspective of, of what we were playing for <laughs> in real world scenario. But hey, that bought you the big combo. And that's what we were interested in. Um, so everybody gathers around. They put the 10 pesos. Everybody gathers around. And everybody's just waiting. Everybody's like looking at each other. Like, who's going to go first? Who's going to do it? Who's going to be the victim? You know, everybody's like all ready to go. You know, oh, there was one rule: no, no hitting in the face. I mean, yeah, um, you could. It was like, you know, like no direct punching to the face was the only rule. But if you miss or you swing and you hit them and you clock him on the side of the head, sure, that's okay. But direct punching to the face, not allowed. That was the only, the only rule that I can think of that I remember. But um. Yes. Okay. Back to the story. I keep getting distracted with things that pop up in my head. Okay. So everybody's gathered, and I am actually standing outside of the circle because I'm like, ooh, as soon as somebody comes out, I'm ready for him. I'm going to position myself in between the, the, the safety zone and the huddle of where everybody's at. I'm going to stand right there, and I'm ready, and I'm looking. Who's going to go? And nobody's going. Nobody's going. Everybody's like looking at each other. Somebody makes the faint and people are like oh, uh, 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 okay okay you know and everybody's like all oh, there and then I had this brilliant idea and I'm like hey everybody's so packed together what if I just go in there push everybody and the whole circle will domino and everybody will fall down let's do that I'll have the 10 pesos, and I'll make my run for victory. <laughs> Let's do it. So I find my opening. I look where the circle is thickest, where all the people are most concentrated. And it just so happens that it's so lucky enough that that huge conglomeration of kids is where they were closest to the money on the floor. So I'm like, this is it. Let's do this. And I rush in, push with my arms as wide as I can, not like this, that's weird, but like I did like a bulldozer and I just like pushed everybody at the same time. And then everybody started toppling over and it had the same effect that I was looking for. And the whole half circle kind of like collapsed onto itself. And it was lucky enough that their feet landed on top of the 10 pesos and I was able to see it. And everybody's wondering, like, hey, what happened? And at that moment, during all the confusion and all the hysteria of people wondering what went wrong, I grabbed the 10 pesos and I ran for my life. And I'm like, and I'm running. I'm running with everything I got. And mind you, another Char Fox fact, I hate running. I think I may have mentioned this somewhere before. It sounds familiar. I hate running. I don't like it. It can cure all the diseases in the world. And that's okay. I still don't like to run. But anyway, so at that moment, I was running with everything that I had. And I'm running for my life. And I'm like, oh gosh, run, 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 run. And then... I start making my way to the safety zone, which is in between two, um, they weren't light poles. There, there were poles, but they weren't light poles. There were something else. Um, there were these two structures. There were weird structures that were there. 
So I'm running and 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 I'm just going and going and I'm like, oh man, victory, I see it. And then I kind of like look to my left and I see some kids starting to like come out of the, the masses of the other kids and they're in fourth grade and I'm like, okay, they're trying to cut me off. Let me just veer off a little bit to this side. I look to the other side and I see a gu another group of kids coming out from the mass of the other kids over there and I'm like, dang it, they're going to cut me off. I got to fight through this. And I just got to go, go, go. And then <laughs> at that moment, how do I explain this? All right. At that moment, running full power, full steam, all of a sudden, I got clocked in the head. And it was a Luis punch. It was literally the boniest, painfulest punch you can ever imagine. It came in from the right, and it hit me in the forehead. Plop! And it totally made me lose my coordination and my bearings. And the whole world kind of like dimmed for a second there. And my body kind of like numbed out. I started losing movements in my arms and my legs. And I just immediately, just lifelessly, like a rag doll, just went face first into the ground. Plop. And I slid for a little bit. And then I laid there. And as I'm laying there, I'm thinking to myself, that French toasting pineapple of Louise just punched me in the forehead. Oh, I'm so mad at him right now. And then for my safety, I kind of like let go of the 10 pesos because I didn't want to get pummeled on the floor. <laughs> so I just kind of like, eh. <laughs> I let go of the 10 pesos. And, and it, it, I laid there and I'm laying there and I'm just so upset and so angry that I just I don't know if it was the impact or my emotions but I just couldn't move I felt lifeless I was just laying on the ground and I'm like I have my eyes open because I remember seeing the grass and the dirt right in my face and I'm, I'm just laying there in the hot sun, just thinking about how much I'm despising my best friend right now. Because he just sucker punched me out of nowhere. No one saw him. I didn't see him. That fool came from behind him running at 100 miles per hour and like right at the last second, you know. And I just laid there. And I felt so... Such a lack of motivation for anything. I just I just couldn't move. I didn't want to get up. I didn't want to do anything. And my arms were by my side. And I'm just laying on the ground. <laughs> just like, eh. Let go of the 10 pesos. That's, the, that's one thing I did. Safety. Eh. <laughs> let go of the money. And then, you know, the the sun is there beating down on me. And, and I start to sweat. I feel wet all over. And I'm like, all right, okay. I gotta, I gotta get up. I can't, I can't keep laying here forever. And I feel sweat pouring down my forehead. And I'm like, wow, I'm really sweaty. I better, I better go to the shade or something. So I start moving my arms up, and they feel so heavy. And I'm just like, oh, man. Oh, I feel so tired right now. And then I slowly bring myself up to my knees. But I'm not, I'm not like, kneeling straight up. I'm, like, kneeling on my elbows. Kind of like on the uh, ORZ position. I don't know if you've seen the... Uh, that little character, you type in 
O, I think it's R and then Z. And it looks like somebody like kneeling with his arms on the ground and his face here. Um, so kind of like got to that position and I'm, I'm on my arms. And then I, I kind of like slouch forward again and I, I kind of like lay on the ground. And I wipe my head because I'm like, man, I'm sweating insanely a lot. So then I wipe my head. And then when I look at my hand, at that moment, I realize it's no longer sweat. I'm bleeding. And a massive, profusive amount of blood. Like my whole hand is covered in blood. And then I kind of like open my eyes and I'm like, wow, Luis, you pack a punch. <laughs> and at that moment, was when finally the rest of the kids caught up with me and everybody just went silent and for like two to three seconds and then everybody starts screaming oh my god they broke him lo partieron lo partieron they broke him they broke him and and like kids start scattering looking for a teacher and I'm just like laying there and I'm wondering like what happened? <laughs> what happened? And I'm all covered in blood and I'm like, oh my gosh. And I look down and I see blood start dripping down on my shirt and my school uniform. And I'm like, what is going on? And then at this point, I'm already kneeling kind of like with my arm on the floor and, and kind of like trying to figure out what's going on. And then I get the urge again to like lay back down on the floor. But when I'm looking at the floor now, there's like this pool of blood on the floor. And I'm like, is that mine? <laughs> what happened? All of a sudden, two teachers start rushing in. And they, they grab me. They look at me and they're like, what's wrong? Are you okay? And I'm like, yeah, I'm okay. They're like, okay, let's go to the nurse. And they pick me up, and they start, like, hauling me across the field. And the whole time I'm wondering, what happened? <laughs> how, did Luis, how did Luis punch me so hard that I'm just, like, bleeding all over the place? So I get to the nurse's office. The nurse is like, <laughs> like what? what happened? And she grabs some cleaning stuff. She starts cleaning me up and whatever. And it's 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 crazy because the nurse actually stitched me up. I had a huge, uh, well, that wasn't huge. It was actually pretty small somewhere up here. You might be able to see it if I zoom in close enough. Uh, 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 somewhere. I might take a picture and put it up anywhere. Anyway, um, <clears throat> so I had a gash up here and the nurse put some stitches on, whatever. <clears throat> then they took me to the hospital. <clears throat> Excuse me. And it turned out, all right, it turned out after everything settled and the truth came out, this one kid, he was in high school. He was a Boy Scout. And he was, he was an Eagle Scout. You know, he's a do-good kid. He walks up to me and he's like, I'm so sorry. And I'm like, what? Why? I I don't know how it happened, but I grabbed the football, and I was playing football catch with my friends. And then they left, and I wondered what would travel faster, a football or a rock. So I put them both together in my hand, and I threw them both at the same time. And as I'm watching the rock fly, I see you running across the, fr the freaking field. Here comes Char Fox with a rock and the with a projectile in the air, and he just happens to intersect at the perfect timing moment to get clocked in the head by the rock. And it was so weird to watch because I kept telling myself, "No, no, stop, 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 stop," but you kept on running. And you just crossed right in front of the path of the rock. And the rock got you. And I got so scared. I thought I killed you. And I'm like, oh, well, I'm okay. <laughs> but it's okay. I mean, it was an accident. Don't worry about it. And he's like, I feel so bad. And I'm like, it's okay. Don't worry about it. It's all good. And we became actually good friends. Because I guess he felt so guilty about it. And it was cool because all of a sudden... I have this high school kid who's like an Eagle Scout and everybody looked up to him. Everybody respected him. And I was like, you know, 
his best bud, so to say. Um, but yes, that made me wonder later on in life, what are the odds? What are the odds of me running in the biggest football, soccer size FIFA League championship field? What are the odds of me running at the perfect moment when some random kid throws a rock at a football and I don't get hit by the football? No, I get hit by the rock. And this is what I mean when I say I'm accident prone. Like things just randomly come to me <laughs> and, and, and happen. <laughs> so I guess a little bone is a Char Fox story. So <laughs> that's that. In any case, <laughs> that went on for a little bit too long. It's, oh my gosh, 25 minutes already into the video. But uh, let's get started. <laughs> I apologize. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, Ruby. And today, let's look up my list. By the way, I got new hardware. I don't know if you can tell. I have half moons in my eyes. I got a lamp. I got some better illumination in here. Pretty soon, I'm going to have a nice microphone so that you don't have to rely on <laughs> this guy. <laughs> and and uh, my, my rolling thunder breathing that I hear sometimes when I'm editing the videos. <laughs> so I got a lamp. So that's cool. And it's bigger than I expected. I was actually thinking it was going to be something like this so that I can put right there behind the camera but it turned out to be something humongous for example let me show you <laughs> it might be blinding sorry about that Wang. <laughs> it's ginormous it's the biggest lamp ever honestly i i really thought it was going to be tiny like like this much when i saw it on amazon i'm like hey that's not bad it's pretty cheap too let's buy it and I'll just put it behind the camera. But no, it's too big. It doesn't even fit behind the monitors. <laughs> but anyway, so yeah, new hardware, better illumination. Uh, Ta-da. <laughs> so anyway, back to where we were at. Let me put this cable down here, actually, because it's blocking my monitor. All right. So ladies and the oh, I was going to look for the list. Here we go. Ba -ba 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 -ba. All right. So last thing we did was the, uh, the Great War, all right? So that's um, that's World of Rep Net Great War. Oh man, we got three episodes left. All right, so next up we have Kudo Yuri. Oh, so I'm guessing that is the not on a Yuri town. Kudo Yuri. Kudo. Kudo. Kudo is like Japanese for black. So black Yuri. I'm not sure what Yuri means. I think it's. I know it's a name because in um, Doki Doki. Yuri is one of the characters. Um, so, Black Yuri. I don't know what Yuri is. I would have to look it up. But anyway, so we have Kudo Yuri, all right? The Not on a Yuri Town, <laughs> episode 10. So, let me look up here in my video folder. Mm hmm. Mm hmm And here we go. Right here. Taking no, that's not right. There we go. Okay. So, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, and fixing the camera. I'm gonna get it right the first time because I have been seasoned to the pep pep and the ding -ding -ding. So I got this. Here we go. First try. We're going this way. And I don't think I closed the closet. No, I didn't. But hey, that's fine. Here we go. And we're going. I'm going. I'm going. I'm going this way. But the camera is going that way. So here we go. Boop, 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 boop. And perfect. Yes, I like it. All right. So ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, Ruby, volume four. Chapter 10, Kudo Yuri, starting now.
Let's just live. He's leaving. I'm sorry. You know, the weirdest part is how it feels. He sounds like John. <laughs> Leaving home is crazy. Going to the city is crazy. Everything you've told me is completely crazy. But it doesn't feel crazy anymore. Feels like I'm doing the right thing. Well, I suppose that's good. No, it's scary. Assuming whatever weird magic this is doesn't come with an infinite supply of money. I'm afraid you'll have to solve this one on your own. <laughs> Be on your guard. What do you mean? Here. from my past. Someone who should not be taken lightly. Ooh, the first encounter. <laughs> oh, man. Tense. Very tense. So do I, John. You and I, John. We got this. Is that baby Red? Are we trying to catch a fish? Red? Yeah. I found a flower on the water. Oh, I see. Can we take it home and plant it in the garden? Oh, no, sweetheart. That flower lives here. But I'll tell you what you can do. Take this Leon and go find something nice for your father's return. He's been hunting for quite some time. 
I bet the journey's been very tiring, don't you? Yes. Do you think you'll know what he wants? I think he wants a water flower in the garden. <laughs> Why did you have to inherit my sass? <laughs> That's adorable, but oh man. <laughs> what can I buy with this? <laughs> well, something just your size. Mm. That's cute. Suck it, please. Oh man, I can't stop thinking hey, about what just. Get back here. <laughs> Where did you get that bread? Oh, I didn't see you no. Pay for it, no, look, it's all moldy. I think she got it from the trash. Let me see. <laughs> ah, she bit me. <laughs> Where'd she come from? She's dressed all weird. I bet she's a bear. Like a dog or something. Seven day rabies? <laughs> <laughs> hmm? <laughs> Father? What is happening here? Wish to run with the rest of them? Sometimes the worst action to take is taking no action at all. Go home. I need to speak with the mayor. Oh, man. We should get back to Crow. It's far off. I know, but Ren and Nora are still out there. And it sounds like a T-Rex. Oh man, a T-Rex Grim. That's scary. I'm sorry. Huh? This is all my fault. I should have never dragged you guys into this. You didn't drag us in. We wanted to come. But you didn't know about Tyrion, about... Ruby. We lost... We lost Pyrrha. You lost her too. And Penny, and your team, and in a way, your sister. But you're still here. Despite everything you've lost, and everything you could still lose, you chose to come out here. Because you felt like you could make a difference. You didn't drag us along. You gave us the courage to follow you. We have to go. Mother? No, right now, okay? Let's go. <gasps> Lee! On! What are you doing? We need to hurry. We can go to the safe house. No. I saw the beast. We need a huntsman. And you two need to leave. What? <laughs> Okay, 
darling. Everything's okay. like a, a horse man on a horse. What is that? get the easy path, do we? Easy's no fun anyway. You okay? Hmm. And you? I've got you here, don't I? 
Oh man. Come on. There's oh. one way up the mountain. Symbol for Shion Village. Shion? But that's. That's the village where we found the huntsman. It's weeks away from here. Fred? Wait! Oh my gosh! Was that Kudo Yuri down there? And that's that. Fixing the camera in a single boop. Boop. All right. Uh, yeah. Let's go ahead and divide the video here. I'll see you guys in the next video.